Yeah, this is turning into a travel vlog, I think. But look at this. Otra vez un. Un blog. Un blog. Otra vez un blog. Hola. Hola. Sí. Hola. <laughs> this is how Spanish nights are being celebrated <laughs> in a city that doesn't sleep <laughs> at all. Ver, ¿qué estás <laughs> Let's talk about something philosophical and what better place to talk about philosophy than uh, an airport. Uh, one of these waiting areas where they put you when your flight is so unpopular that nobody else is waiting with you. I'm going to Madrid uh, and we're gonna see a theatre. Actually we're going to Pamplona from Madrid which is a little place up north of Spain and we're going to install Otello there. But this weekend I'm not even gonna work there. I'm just gonna look at the place. I'm gonna take hundreds of photos to prepare myself to do something I want to talk to you about. It's site-specific content. If you're talking about site-specific content, we're talking about a few factors that determine what kind of site-specificness you... Site-specificness, that, that's a word, it's... I think. There are three determining factors, which is, one of them is your audience, obviously, because your audience is expecting certain things and they have a certain recognition of visuals and, of course, connotations are really important. For example, the color green, which means hope in most desert countries, because where there's green, there's always water. In Germany, it means poisonous because green apples and uh, the color green for painting has been created using arsenic. So the connotation on one simple thing as a color can change completely what you're showing the audience. So careful about that. Also, certain connotations with what you're offering them. For example, we did the Otello, that one we're going to do in Pamplona as well. We showed this storm I'm creating at the beginning of the piece to the audience in Mallorca and they were happy because a storm in Mallorca is, well, it's the Mediterranean and a few higher waves and that's it. Then we took the same piece and brought it to Gran Canaria where people went like oh, over the storm that we first created because it was just too weak. So luckily we were in rehearsals and we found out that storm, well a tempest, means something completely different on the Canary Islands where there is a um, real storm happening. So it's really important to keep in mind who is your audience and what is their realm of reality and their experiences. With that you can offer them images that help them understand the piece and just locate where it's happening. Tocha has been and is still the place where everybody who comes to Madrid comes in uh, or goes out like I do now. I'm joining Alfonso and we're going to Pamplona. There's different levels where the trains come in and where they leave and how you enter is also pretty difficult so basically I'm lost. Yeah, but still the station with its magnificent roof is something like a, a botanical garden or something. Apart from that bunch lot of stores that are situated here in the station where you can buy everything from sunglasses to actual houses, security seems to be a big issue. So if you come here to leave 
better plan for some time at the security lines. The real fun begins when you are being separated. So as you have the ticket and your colleague is either stuck in security or stuck in the line and uh, doesn't have a ticket. And only about 20 minutes later, you will sit in your place with an opera director that somebody booked next to you to work on the way to Pamplona. <laughs> The planning was a little tight. It was in fact so tight that we don't have time to eat. They told us to get bocadillos. A bocadillo. There's a bread roll and the classical one is filled with cheese and jamón. Lunchtime at the train. Thank God we've got some work to do. The in train entertainment system just broke down. Spain. like a clockwork, which is unusual for Spanish theatres, but we are going the clockwork way. No lunch. In, out, no lunch. No lunch time. No lunch time at all. Thank God we had our bocadillos. Yes, your bocadillos. <laughs> Mis bocadillos. <laughs> Porque yo soy el alemán. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a bit of Spanish driving. That's a big theater. Let's um, let's find the entrance. Um, I think it's this small theater in this small town in the north of Spain deserves a um, sea with waves. Oh! So that's the entrance. Going to work. We are two levels down from the ground in this uh, small theater in this small town in the north of Spain. This is the parking area, the loading area, and this is the loading bay where they bring in the trucks to unload and they actually run in here and be lifted up to the stage. And this theater is enormous. Talking about site-specific content, you see those wavy sails? This is what I'm going to project on. So think about it. We are playing Otello. It is about a captain of a ship. And uh, these are sails. Get the relation? Yeah, there's a certain similarity. So yeah, let's, let's give them sails. Oh yeah. Thus ends our adventure in Pamplona. While he's ordering a table for our well-deserved dinner, we're still wondering what is site-specific content. Well, it is content that is tailor-made for the site you're in. Which means, if you do a mapping, don't just do a mapping with any content. Try to relate to the place you're in. This is the kind of lectorial you like. Subscribe to my channel and um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>